what's going to set people free, liberate you, is the tree of life. It'll liberate your soul. Uh, when, you, when you're in the Father's love, it's the depths of love. And when you're in the rest, the depths of rest, I love them. And the tree of life is starting to explode now. And the liberty and the freedom, there's six pairs of fruit in there. And liberty and freedom is one of the pairs. It's in and it, it liberates you. You feel the liberation. You feel the freedom. It liberates your personality. It'll liberate your spirit. It'll liberate you in the glory of God. There's a lot in that tree. I've already, I've, I think I've identified the 12 fruits in that tree, but I, liberty and freedom are, are, are one of the pairs there. Amazing. Incredible. It's in that tree. When you learn to partake and really partake and you learn, the Holy Spirit has to teach you how to partake. Because if you don't learn to partake, you won't, you won't get the fruit of it. And it's there all the time, but you won't be able to receive it if you don't learn to partake. There's another pair of fruit in there, joy. In the tree, true joy. It's deep joy that releases out of your spirit. You'll laugh. Oh, you'll worship God. I mean, you'll praise Him at heights. You don't even need a song. It'll just, it'll just bubble at your belly. It'll just release. I call it joy and pleasure forevermore. The tree of life is full of it. And funny, it's just eternal. It's always there. It's amazing. And we're starting to be able to partake of eternity now and the joy of what, what it's going to be like in eternity. It's never going to run dry. It's awesome. That's another pair. Liberty and freedom, joy and pleasure forevermore. Go to Hebrews 11.6. I want to share with some things I've been exhorting, uh, but what I've been recognizing what God's doing um, with all of this ascension up into the right hand of God, with all this ascension, there's something he's doing. And according to what he spoke to me this morning, some of you are going to begin receiving kingdom assignments soon. And your first think you go to in the mind when God's kingdom assignment is, oh, I'm going to do something. The greatest kingdom assignment ever is faith. And God, can, can, if he can get your faith into a realm of the impossible, which I'm going to talk to you this morning about how to get your faith into the realm of the impossible, uh, you won't get to the realm of the impossible uh, without certain things operating in your faith, it'll always be limited. But God can take the limits off your faith, but you have to know how he's going to do it. When he gets into the realm of the impossible, you can move mountains. You're not going to move mountains in your own strength. We're not going to move mountains in the ways of man. We're not going to move mountains with the mixture. Half in, half out. We're going to move mountains by dwelling with God. Amen. There is there is another aspect to this whole ascension into the right hand of God, and it's the realm of faith, not just to enter, receive, grow, transform. But there's this other arena where God will assign you faith mandates, kingdom mandates, the kind of mandates that can shift a generation, the kind of mandates that can shift whole cities, the kind of authority that can come out of this realm and shift things. This is a hidden realm. Many people are trying to shift cities. They're trying to do it in their own strength and the ways of man with some little bit of anointing and just doing the same thing. If you've been around long enough, you'll see it's just the same thing all over again. It doesn't take me about 30 minutes to go to a conference, and I pretty much know where it's going. Because you, you've been around so much, you just know where things are going. You know the result. No matter how much it can get hyped, it's all going to land in a certain result zone. Amen? And so you have to move out of hype and, and move into the realm of the impossible. And that's what I want to talk to you about today, what God's doing in this ascension into the mountain. The greatest authority given to man will be given in the mountain of God, in the Father. 
And that kind of authority, you won't be moving small things. You'll be moving mountains that have stood in the way of the church, stood in the way of citywide revivals, stood in the way. Already we're seeing this in our family, getting caught up, representing my children uh, because the enemy just PKs or PKs, and they start just coming in and, and start holding. There's another way to do things. I started holding Carson up in the glory of God. It was only a week, and God encountered him. So heavy, so strong, it's steel reeling inside of him. It was like he was born again, again. And God completely set him free of a lot of stuff. And he's going to be giving his testimony soon. I was shocked at the stuff he had already gotten involved in. And God encountered him and cleansed the whole thing in one moment. And we learn to move in the power of God like that because I'm, I'm telling you, 10 years of counseling would not have shifted him like that. But the Father can shift like that. He can move in. and Because I prayed because they couldn't hear my voice. I mean, I couldn't get his attention more than four or five minutes, you know. But God encountered him and encountered him heavy. And still, he's, he's like telling mom, he feels so innocent inside. And, and he goes, man, he said, there's nothing like the Father's love. Because that love out of heaven encountered him here. Isn't that awesome? change him also started shifting victoria i started seeing it and uh i started seeing some changes in her and i said uh i see some things changing she goes what, what do you mean i said i see you're starting to pray again she goes how'd you know that i see you're starting to connect with god again i didn't have to say a word in fact they couldn't see from me anyway at the time and but god can do it amen because he removed the veils from him he moved the mountain out of the way that's authority that's a real authority you can pray for 10 years and not have that kind of authority but that's positional authority amen that's from the mountain of god authority there's so many good things that happen when you're up in god's mountain you have to work less and you get a lot more done amen you work a lot less and a whole lot more gets done fact the stuff he has us in now it's impossible anyway i mean he took me 10 years to get to the right hand he finally at the end of last year started giving me my real assignment and what he wanted me to do and i'm like there's no way possible to do that with anything he goes that's right exactly but before that he couldn't have given me the fullness of that assignment because i would not have known how to even access that now i'm accessing and learning how to cooperate with him and there's some major stuff about the shift amen i mean major Woo. it's awesome because god opens your eyes when you're up in there with him he gives you sight that you cannot get in the lower realms you can't because you get convoluted here too easy when you get convoluted, your heart will get convoluted. If your heart's the eye of the heart gets convoluted, it gets tossed and pulled and torn. It's not settled in any one place. It's just, it's just all over the place because it's moving with the world system instead of moving in God. When God hones that heart in and gets it situated up into his mountain, he can get it focused in there. Then what he can do, and this is the part he told me, he says, I'm going to begin giving assignments to those that are dwelling. He'll give you an assignment, a mandate to move mountains that will truly affect the kingdom of God in incredible ways. Amen? Let's give God glory. Hallelujah. It's not all just about transformation. It's also about functioning in the kingdom, being prepared to function at a much higher level. Isn't that awesome? And when you function at the higher levels, it's glorious because there's so much freedom, there's so much liberty, there's so much light, there's so much glory that you, you don't, you, you, you don't fall down in that convoluted place. So you stay up there, and God makes, starts making it easy for you. Amen? And when he starts making it easy, that's not the time to get lazy. 
That's just the time to stay connected. A lot of people, when it starts getting easy for them, they get disconnected. I went through years of that. I would fight, fight, fight. He started making it easy for me, and I'd disconnect, and then the enemy would start coming back in. But now I've learned, okay, God, you're making it easy. I take that because he's making it easy. I stay there so he can make it good. He can make it gooder and gooder, better and better. Glory to glory. Amen? In Texas, it's gooder and gooder. In the Bible, it's glory to glory. Hebrews 11.6, you there? All right. Without faith, it's impossible to please Him. In the high realms, you cannot get anything moved without faith. But it's not just faith. It's what faith is doing. Amen? For he that cometh to God must first believe that he is, and he's a rewarder. We talked about that last week, the finished work. I don't want to stay into that. I want you to go to chapter 12. Wherefore, seeing we also are encompassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. Got to lay it aside. The sin which doth so easily beset us. Let us run with patience the race that's set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author, say the author, and the finisher. God is authoring something in your life. The Lord is authoring a faith that he's going to bring to a finished state. We don't understand what that looks like because we haven't arrived there yet. Because we haven't arrived there, we're just operating in what we know to be faith. But when he gets done, he's going to bring your faith into a place that's well-pleasing to the Father. Because it's not just your stand of faith. When the old days, all we do is just walk around confessing, confessing. I'm a big faith man. Confessing, confessing. I'm not moved by what I see, feel, or hear. I'm only moved by the Word of God, and I believe it. I am definitely moved by what I feel now. I'm definitely moved by what I see because I'm moved by what I see by the Word of God and I see with the eye of my heart and I'm moved by what I feel. I have so much feeling in my faith now. I have so much glory working there because of where I'm exercising faith at. When I was exercising faith here in this jurisdiction, in this realm, I was constantly being exposed to the warfare of the enemy. So I had to come to a place where I'm not moved by what I see, feel, or hear because I'm constantly feeling and I just kept confessing, confessing, and I had breakthroughs, but that wasn't the finishing part of faith. That was just the authoring. There's a finishing of faith as he brings you up into the mountain of God. When he brings you up in the mountain, he starts a process of transformation. He'll start a process of transforming your faith into the rest, moving it into life, moving it into love. And every time you receive something on your way up, that becomes an integral part of your faith that's going to move mountains. Because what he's giving you and working in you is going to be released through you. Amen? God, if you have disharmony in your life, you'll have disharmony in your faith. Amen. Your faith works in harmony with your transformation. You can write that down. If you have moving into the rest, moving into the rest, there's a purpose why he's doing that. He's trying to get you into a position of stillness, trying to get you into a position where it's no more you that's doing it, but him that is doing it. And if he can't get you still, then what happens is your soul will take over. Your heart will take over. I mean, your flesh will take over, and he'll start trying to produce. The will of God in the stead of faith. That's called Ishmael. Anybody ever had one of those? Man, I looked the other day, I'm like, God, I have ten times as many Ishmaels as Abraham. He goes, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Because God doesn't care about that stuff as long as you keep going. Because he's got to work it out of you anyway. So if you keep producing Ishmael's, he's going to have to get that out of you because you cannot move mountains if you have Ishmael capacity. 
You cannot because your flesh or your old man or your soul will try to circumvent what God's doing. And it's genius in its ways to circumvent. It'll circumvent what God's doing by what you do. One day I'll write a book on circumvention. But as it substitutes or circumvents God's way, then it kicks in a gear. It feels like God, tastes like God. You get excited about it. You move out in it. And then three months later, you fall flat on your face. But you got to get all that out. So if that's ever happened, don't beat yourself, don't beat yourself up so much. Because everybody's going to go through it. A-typers are going to go through it majorly. Why? Because A-typers know how to get things done. The problem with A-typers is when in faith is the A-typers want to get in front of God and do it for Him. Not knowing that I'm in front of Him doing it for Him. I thought I'm just doing this. He's got to get that A-type personality under submission to His ways. Amen? Because His ways is you're going to be a part of this, but I'm going to do it. You'll have a part. And then people adopt, well, because then what happens, he brings you into a place of brokenness. That's part of your transformation. You need to write this down. You cannot stay in brokenness and fulfill the will of God. You have to move out from brokenness into his glory, into his life, into his love. If you're walking around broke, Broken, 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 all I'm broken, broken, broken. You'll sound like a broken record. And your life will manifest brokenness everywhere. There is a purpose for brokenness, but it's not to stay there. Because what happens is you'll start adopting brokenness badges. Look how much I've gone through. Well, look how much I've gone through. You start glorying in what you've gone through. And then they start adopting, here's another one, here's a resolution people adopt when they're going through, going through the storm, 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 storm. All of a sudden they're adopting and God must be up to something. Because all this storm I'm going through must mean I'm going to get a be- great breakthrough. God doesn't measure your breakthrough about how much storm you're going through. Write it down. How many of you ever heard about somebody said, man, the stuff I've been going through lately, God must be getting ready to do great things for me. How many of you ever heard that? It's easy to adopt that, but then what happens, nothing happens, and you go start going through something else again. Because if you do not move into a position of faith, active faith, consolidated faith, focused faith, In those areas to move the mountains, you'll just keep going through storm, storm. Now, you can get the storm off, but I want victory. There's one thing to take the storm off. There's another thing to have dominion over the storm. There's one thing I went through the storm. Okay, I'll take this storm off, learn to do that. Glory to that. It's awesome. Praise God. But there's another thing to come into the storm and have victory over it. Storm, you'll never come to my household again. You have no place in my household. Now, you can say that, but you've got to come to the position of that kind of faith. Amen? It's a whole other level of faith. Amen? All right. Go to chapter 13. And we'll look at verse 20. It's all right here. Now, the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ. If he did that, I'm sure he can take care of us. Amen. That great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect. Make you mature, whole. Bring your faith into a state of perfection in every good work to do his will. Watch this. Working where? In you, that which is well-pleasing in his sight. He's got to work these things in you. Now, a lot of us have been subjected to these trials and these storms of life, and we've learned to grow and change and transform to these storms. I can attest to you, been around for a little while, that is definitely not the best way to do this. 
If all we do is grow through storm and trials, we're going to have a very hard life. I found there's another way to transform, and that's going up in the mountain of God. He can transform things a whole lot faster than a trial and a storm in the earth can. He can make the transformation working in me, that which is well-pleasing, why getting me ready for my next level. See, a lot of people think, well, God's just going to come in. I mean, I just know it. One day he's just going to do this. You cannot move mountains. Write this down with one day faith. Write it down. Because one day will never show up. You have to arrive into the day. You keep prophesying of one day. You have to move into that position by faith. Thank you for your enthusiasm. One day faith does not move mountains because it's one day, one day. God's going to do this. And then this, the adoptee, I'm trying to get you a few of these adopted mentalities that keep people where they are. Here's another one. God will just do it. I don't have to do anything. No, God has already done it, and you do have to do something. If you adopt that, God will just do it. I don't have to do anything. And we adopt spiritual philosophies around it. Watch spiritual philosophies because they won't get you anywhere. Amen? Faith will get you everywhere in God. But you have to learn what you do, what God does. Everyone put your hand on your heart. Say, I have a part. Today, I agree. I have a part. I have a role. Amen. Start saying that. You have a part, God has a part. If you don't do your part, God can't do his part. Here's another one. God always operates from the position of the finished work. You don't go up to get God to do something. You go up to receive what he's already done. He's already done it. You have to get that settled. Listen to last week's message. It's a very good one. Is this helping anybody or am I just rambling today? Philippians 1, 2, 3. Philippians 1. And when this is your neighbor and say, I have a part. Make sure you get me back to that part. The part you don't play is in the realm of your flesh. When you're unskilled in these things, your soul will get in front of God because it's unskilled. And the enemy will empower your soul to get out in front of God to get you to produce an action. So once he can power that action and get you moving into that action, you'll get out there. You'll eventually fall on your face, but it's designed to get you away from God's process into human process. We call that works. We can call it whatever you want. You can call it Ishmael works. It's your soul being activated instead of your spirit. That's why you got to eat the meat. Say, eat the meat. Here we go again. You got to eat lots of steak. Why? Because he goes, he that it's on milk is unskillful in the word. But he that eateth the meat, say, eateth the meat, he's able to discern both good and evil. You'll be able to discern spirit and soul. You'll start discerning the operation of the soul. You got to get that thing down. We have a series called Dethroning the Soul. You must, that's, what, that's part of your progression up in the mountain is to get the soul down. Amen? You have to put him down. If you don't, he will rise up. And he just doesn't rise up in the arena of sin. He'll rise up to circumvent because the enemy will see to it that he does. The enemy can work through the soul, and he's very skillful at getting your soul in front of God to get you out of alignment. But it's always going to be what you can do, not what God does. Why? Because when God's assigning you something, most of the time it's above you, beyond you, something you cannot do. That's why I had to wait to Abraham. All right, you keep trying to do this. Fine. 
Let me get you to a place you can't do it. How many of you have been there? I can't do this. You can't sit there either. I can't do it. That's a good thing. In the flesh, you can't do it. But in the spirit, you must do it. Write it down. It's because you're separating out what you can't do. You got to, se- I'll say it like this you have to separate what is sanctioned and what is not sanctioned in your part with God. There is a part that's sanctioned and there's a part that's unsanctioned. There's a part that's blessed and there's a part that's not blessed as far as your cooperation in moving mountains. There's a part you're going to play, a part God's going to play, but there's certain things that are sanctioned you can do, and there's certain things that are off limits. Say off limits. When learning to do this, I'm like, God, what do I do? Every time I do this, I keep running a wall. I don't know what I can do. I don't know what's right, what's wrong. Every time I do it, it's mostly wrong. Why? Because my soul was in dominance. I was an A-typer. I was full of ambition. I was ready to move the kingdom, you know. Come on. You had to get all that out of way, get all that to a side. Then brokenness, like played golf for a whole year, whatever, with church, you know. So once I found out I couldn't do it, when I got up in the right hand of God, I found out there was a whole lot of things I could do. As long as I was connected to God with my spirit, my faith could get activated, and I could. I had a part. Now I'm finding out God can do a lot of things because I'm getting positioned with him. See, when I'm positioned, my flesh is put down. My spirit's in position. He's working a higher level now because he's wanting to bring a faith to a finished position that's well-pleasing to the Father, a faith that's working by rest, a faith that's working by love, not my love, the Father's love that's infusing me. A faith that's working by life, when he's infusing the life, all that gets released out of my faith. And so when I'm standing in front of this impossible doorway, I don't know it's impossible because I'm so full of him. All I'm doing is I'm laughing, I'm weeping with joy, and I'm... I, I got a scripture for you. God fills you with all joy and peace and believing. If your faith hasn't come to all joy and peace, it's not in the right place. It's still too storm oriented, not glory oriented. It's not, you're not positioned in the right. When you start getting positioned up in God, you have joy and peace and it all pours out there. See, that's the kind of faith he's looking for. A faith that's full of joy, full of peace, full of rest, full of love, full of life. Thank you for your enthusiasm. I mean, you're in there, it's like every day is glorious. I'm like, this is not supposed to be glorious. This is supposed to be work. It's supposed to be hard. I'm not supposed to enjoy this. I'm loving it. Loving every minute of it. I'm loving it. I'm like, this is awesome. Give me another assignment. God said, you haven't got this one done yet. Let's get this one. I'm like, I got it. Because I'm settled. Because what happens on your way up, he'll start settling you. If you don't climb up, you're subjected to way too much stuff. And your faith is never going to be effective. Not the way he wants it to be effective. Because you've got too much stuff constantly convoluting your life. You're, 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 you get centered one day, off centered the next day, and you're living back and forth because you're not high enough. So that's why he wants you to climb up. When you get climbed up, what happens is things start settling. You can see, you get laser focus. Amen. You wake up. Even if I'm convoluted that day, I can get into laser focus like that. I'll move back in. I'm getting into that glory realm where I can see. I'm understanding what he wants to do. It's not me that's doing it. It's him to do it. But I'm playing the part of faith. He's going to play the part of the finished work. The two of them are going to collide and kabam. Kaboom. Amen. Things are going to shift. Woo. Faith worketh by love. Oh, I need you to, to walk in love. No! 
Faith works by the Father's love that's infusing you into the mountain. It's that love that He gives you that goes into your faith, not some kind of love that you generate from your flesh. That's not the faith, the love He's looking for for your faith. He wants to fill it with love, life, liberty, freedom. Now the tree of life gets added to the faith. I'm like, oh, my goodness, there's joy up in this tree. I'm normally not a joyous person. I used to be just real serious all the time. Oh, got a big car. Got to be serious all the time. I'm starting to enjoy stuff. Even when I can't hit the golf swing the way I want to, I'm like, glory, hallelujah. Joy comes out of that tree, real joy. Not ha, ha, ha. It's mmm. It's joy and pleasure that comes up out of that tree. And I'm eating from it, and I'm like, oh. I'm like, liberty and freedom, glory and grace, wisdom and discernment, strength and might. All those pears are in the tree. You know, the pear you eat, you know. He says, there's 12 fruits. I found, I found at least 12. They're working for me because it's liberating me. And when I'm getting liberated, I'm getting happy again. And when I get happy, I got a joy that's not based on my circumstance. It's a joy that overrides my circumstance. It's a joy that doesn't even see what's going on. Because what's working and you doesn't get affected by things. Faith is still alive because I'm dwelling in a place I'm getting help from the tree of life. I'm getting help from the throne of grace. I'm getting help from the lily. I'm getting help from the Father's love, and it's fueling my faith. So my faith is not something that I'm generating. It's something that He is filling up in me. Before I was trying to have great faith, I just didn't have the ingredient for it. I didn't have the tool. But when I'm way up in the mountain, he starts giving me what I need. Now I can stand at the impossible door literally every day. Stand at that possible door every day with the same type of faith. Full of joy, full of love, full of rest. Now, because of the tree of life, it's full of life, full of pleasure. Every day, it's the same way. I'm like, wait a minute, God, something's changed, and I'm closing. I said, something's changing here. I said, before you gave me something to do, I'd last a couple of months, and I'm out doing something else, you know. Now I'm just, I'm zeroed in every day, um, but I'm arriving to the same place. It's kind of golf swing. You've got to arrive back to that ball. There's a few things you're going to have to go through to get that thing back the right way. Amen? You don't know what I'm talking about? Try to swing it. You'll know. And so I was arriving back at the same position every day, a position that was full of love, full of life, full of joy, full of peace, full of rest. And it was all releasing into this impossible assignment, which was not making any room for doubt to have a position or place. It wasn't anywhere. I'm like, where is doubt? Where did doubt go? Where is discouragement? Where did it go? Why? Because when you're operating in the mountain of God, discouragement don't, doesn't get up there. It's all taken out on the way up. See, everything from the world's taken away in your ascension up. Now you have a faith that's pleasing because that's what the Father's looking for. All this time we were trying to generate this faith because every one of us got a big faith man mentality. Couldn't get it here because I didn't have the fuel for it. And I was wearing too much of the world. So what the right hand of God has done in the ascension up is taken the world off and put the fuel in. Amen. And now the fuel's there. The world's off. It's easy. But... Got to do it every day. It wasn't easy climbing the mountain. There is nothing in life 
that's going to come to you easy. There is a work involved, but it's the work of faith. It's the work of ascension. But if you allow God to develop these faith muscles and these positions in you, if you allow him to do this, you're going to have it the rest of your life. You're not going to have to work at it. Hallelujah. I've learned something. We're going to go out and enjoy ourselves. Amen. We're going to go have fun. One more scripture. We'll go. Just go to Romans 4 and we'll close. I'm just giving you a whole other way to do this. And it's so far glorious, you're going to see the result very soon. How you know that? Because I won't come off the mountain. If I don't come off the mountain, it's going to happen. And it's going to be awesome. It's going to change everything. Woo! No telling what he's going to have us do in the future. Wow. Romans 4, verse 17. As it is written, I've made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things that be not as though they were, who against hope, say against hope, believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations. Verse 19, being not weak in faith, considered not his own body now being dead, was about a hundred years old. 99, he was one year from his promise. 99, consider not his body. He found this kind of faith in his last year. When he was 99, remember God approached him, and he laughed at God in total unbelief, but he found it in his final year. I understand now what he found. I understand what God's looking for. I had no way of understanding it before, but I understand it now. Being not weak in faith, considering not his own body being dead. How would you like to be given that assignment? This is Abrahamic faith. It's the faith for the impossible. God's not going to give you an assignment for the impossible without preparing you for it. Amen? He was charged and mandated by God to give birth to a son from a dead womb. His body was dead. Her womb was dead. And God commanded him to give birth from that womb. It was a mandate. That's Abrahamic faith. How would you think Abraham said back, oh, God will just do it? No. He had his part. He had to move into a position where he was no longer moved by the circumstance he was wearing. He got out from the circumstance he was wearing, which was his own body. He got out of that realm and got into God's realm. Amen. When he got into God's realm, he staggered not at the promise of God, was strong in faith, giving glory to God that what he had promised, he was able to perform. He was full of faith. He found it. Wearing a dead body, he found the faith of God. He found it. He became the father of many nations. He's still bearing fruit to this day. Every time someone's born again, it goes on his account. Man, the whole thing is on his account. Because of one act of faith, he was able to move an impossible mountain and give birth out of a dead womb. Abraham and Sarah, incredible. I know what that faith looks like now. If you want that kind of faith, you will never find it operating here. Even the Bible says Abraham had to go up because he operated and accounted righteousness. He transcended his own dispensation and got to operate in ours. And that's where he found it. Went up into God. That's where he found it, up into God. Listen to me. I'm telling you how. To transform and change things. When you've been around long enough, you'll find out things just don't change on their own. They have a habit of just staying the same or worse. But there's a way we can all shift and God can set nations up in us and move things in the spirit and it's going to be a lot of fun doing it. Amen? 
Let's give God glory. Hallelujah. Let's all stand.